I apologize for my two-week leave of absence uh, between the end of the school year and getting home for the summer, which is awesome, by the way. Um, I just haven't had time to make a video, but from here on out, I promise, I will give you um, my analysis of a new painting every week from here on out. And this week, we're going to be looking at Liberty Leading the People by the French Romantic artist Eugène Delacroix. This painting is a commemoration of the July Revolution of 1830. This isn't the original French Revolution with the storming of the Bastille and Charles Dickens' Tale of Two City kind of revolution. This occurred actually several decades later. This is the dethroning of Charles X. And I'll give you just a little bit of historical context. When Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon I, abdicated the throne, Louis XVIII was restored to power. And then when he died, the throne was given by hereditary privilege to Charles X, who was reigning at the time of this uh, July Revolution. And part of the revolution's um, cause was actually because the throne was given by hereditary privilege as opposed to uh, popular consent, the consent of the people. And then if you want to learn about you know, what happened afterwards, I'll just let you read about that on your own. Um, but as I said, I want to emphasize that this is after the, the original French Revolution. And this painting itself was actually painted the year of the July Revolution in 1830. It's oil on canvas, and you can see it today in the Musée de Louvre in Paris. Delacroix is known as, um, in many ways, a, a marking point or a game changer between the Age of Enlightenment and Romanticism. And we've talked about both these topics briefly bef uh, before. With the Age of Enlightenment, um, we talked about it in light of neoclassicism. And this painting, Romanticism in general, really, is essentially the antithesis of neoclassicism. There's a huge de-emphasis here on precise drawing and um, much more attention to just, if you can even call it attention, to loose, free brushstrokes. That's what Romanticism is all about. It's not confined to the, the academic tradition of the neoclassicists. And unlike his contemporary Anga, Jean-Auguste Dominique Anga, we've looked at several of his paintings, Delacroix believed that the meticulous uh, sketching and drawing were really opposed um, to the passion and vitality that he wanted to achieve in his art. Anga was uh, much more of a neoclassicist than Delacroix was. In fact, um, Anga is usually not really considered a romantic painter at all. He's considered strictly neoclassicist. But Delacroix, as I said, was, was really against that. He was once quoted, and obviously this was originally in French, but that the artist who aims at perfection in everything achieves it in nothing. And I love that quote because it really captures not only the mindset of, I think, Delacroix, but of the Romanticists in general. So let's look now specifically at this very famous painting. The central figure is a personification of liberty. She's depicted as goddess-like, yet she's still approachable in her humanity, which is important since um, we have this idea of the revolution reaching out to everyone, the common man included. She's holding a musket in her left hand with a bayonet, and then the the peu tricolor, the, the tricolor flag of the revolution in her right hand. And supposedly, so I've read, there's a second tricolor flag visible from the Notre Dame Towers in the far distance, but I can barely see it. I'm not sure if you would be able to see that, but supposedly it's there, so I'll just take their word for it. Liberty is treading on top of, really, piles of just corpses. Um, she looks as if she's coming directly toward the viewer. And she's wearing a, a Liberty cap, or a Phrygian cap, which was um, a symbol of the revolution. <laughs> a Phrygian cap is also a, a gallbladder condition for you medical students out there, but I'll try to stay on focus. One interesting thing is, look at all the different people here. The revolutionaries really represent a, um, I'll use the word hodgepodge, even though people will laugh, a hodgepodge of social classes. The man with the top hat um, off to the left from the viewer's perspective of liberty is wealthy um, based on his, his manner of dress and, and the top hat. And then to the right of liberty, you have this um, boy carrying two pistols whose dress is more indicative of the French middle class, or the bourgeoisie. So you have a wide variety, or a, a good assortment of different people here, participating in this revolution, from very different walks of social life, yet they're united in their ostensible determination. And even kind of the fierce gaze that you can see, if you look at 
any uh, any any one individual in this painting, uh, just study their face for a moment, and I think you'll find that um, even though they're as I said they're dressed very differently, they all kind of have a, a very similar expression on their face. The legacy of this painting is preserved in at least two ways that I can think of. One would be the Statue of Liberty um, in New York City is is based off of the figure of Liberty from this painting. And it's also included on Coldplay's album, <laughs> the, the cover of the Coldplay album, Viva La Vida, um, which, if you listen to Viva La Vida, actually has a lot of references to the French Revolution, which made this an appropriate choice as their album artwork. Anyway, as I said, I'll be back with a new video next week, so please be sure to subscribe if you like art as much as I do, or if you just want to um, let me know that my time is appreciated. Either way. I'll accept both reasons for subscriptions. Um, other than that, have a great week, everybody, and we will see you again right here next week.